what you need to be able to do, as I say, if you remember that triangle we had of the observations, the so that's the macro, then we had the uh, molecular level, so you've got to explain in terms of particles, so what is lost electrons, what is gained electrons, what's been reduced, what's been oxidized, and, and those sort of terms. And now we're going to be looking, focusing on the model. In other words, representing it in terms of symbols, so, uh, and in this case, in equations. So um, as I work through, I'll ask questions just to check that you know words like oxidation and reduction. But let's first have a look at, we looked at a reaction where we reacted magnesium metal in an acid. Now, the acid part is the hydrogen ion. So you can see over here, I've just made it an H+. Plus. I haven't said HCl or H2SO4, because the active ingredient, if I can use that term, uh, the part that's reacting is the, the H plus ion. OK. And that forms H2 and the magnesium ion. So just checking to see if you know the terms of oxidation and reduction and oxidation number. What is the oxidation number of magnesium metal in this, this magnesium over here on the left hand side? Do you remember your oxidation number rules? Yep, it's zero. Great. Because it's a free element, it's magnesium metal on its own, rule number one, a free element, the oxidation number is always one. What is the oxidation number of magnesium on the right hand side, the magnesium ion? Anybody want to have a guess? It's rule number four, where it says, yep. The charge of a simple ion is the same as its oxidation number, or the oxidation number is the same as a charge for a simple ion. So by simple ion, we mean only that element makes up the ion. It's not MgO2 plus or something like that. It's just Mg2 plus. So I have gone from an oxidation number of 0 to an oxidation number of plus 2. So has it become more positive, the oxidation number, or has it become more negative? So Christina is typing. But OK, it's become more positive. So if it's become more positive, it's lost electrons. Because remember, electrons are negative. So if I'm losing negatives, I become more positive. So has magnesium been oxidized, or has it been reduced? So think of oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So magnesium metal has lost electrons, so it's been oxidized. Correct. OK, it's been oxidized. Magnesium metal has lost those electrons because it's given it to the hydrogen ions. Now notice I'm using specific terms. I'm saying hydrogen ions. I'm not just saying hydrogen. So be sure you explain exactly what you mean. Do you mean hydrogen gas, hydrogen atoms, hydrogen ions? So magnesium metal has lost the electrons by giving them to the hydrogen ions. So the hydrogen ions have now gained electrons. So the hydrogen ions have been reduced. Because magnesium has lost those electrons and handed it over, it's the reductant because it's reducing the hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions are taking electrons from the magnesium. So what are the hydrogen ions? Are they an oxidant or a reductant? Now, don't worry if this sounds like gobbledygook, because I know we did this last term, and you may not have sat in on the lesson last term. But does anybody want to have a go and think of hydrogen ions as taking electrons from magnesium? So it's oxidizing the magnesium. Correct, Nicholas. So if it's oxidizing the magnesium, it's the oxidant. So the reductant and the oxidant are reactants, so they always have to be on the left-hand side. And 
it's what they do to the other one. So this is the oxidant, because it's taking electrons from the magnesium. It's making magnesium lose. Magnesium is the reductant, because it's making the hydrogen ions gain. OK. Now, going back to balancing redox reactions. This is a fairly straightforward one. I think you could just look at it and balance it. How would you balance it? You just have to actually put one number in there. And what would it be? Nobody want to have a go? OK. Just put a 2 in front of the H plus, And then you'll see I've got one magnesium um, on element you know, particle on the left-hand side. I've got one magnesium element particle on the right-hand side. Same thing for the hydrogen. I've got two now by putting a two in front, and I've got two there. So it's been balanced with respect to atoms. So we can, for a lot of redox reactions, we could just look at it and work out what it is. But sometimes you can go wrong if you just look at it, because you need to make sure that your total number of electrons transferred are the same that's being lost and that's being gained. So in this one, it's a fairly straightforward one. So by half reactions, I mean the oxidation and the reduction half reaction. So for the reduction half reaction, it's H plus going to H2. And for uh, the oxidation half reaction, it's Mg going to Mg2 plus. So looking at first the reduction, the H plus has gained. And I first balance the atoms. The oxidation, the number of atoms are the same. OK, one magnesium to one magnesium. Then I balance electrons. Now, there are two ways you can work out how many electrons have been lost or gained. The first one is using oxidation numbers. If I'm going from plus 1 to 0, how many electrons has each hydrogen gained, each hydrogen um, ion. So I'm going from plus 1 to 0. I see Nicholas is typing. It's gained. Each hydrogen ion has gained one electron. Correct. And if I've got two hydrogen ions, how many will two gain? Two. Correct. So the same thing here. I'm going from 0 to 2. Um, to plus 2, so I must have lost 2 electrons. So that's one way, using oxidation numbers. And it's always good to actually use both ways. Um, the other way is to use a charge balance, where you can say, right, um, my left-hand side ch total charge must equal my right-hand side total charge, because it's an equation. Both sides have to be equal in charges and atoms and so on. So if I've got two positives on this side, and I've got neutral, no charges, on the right-hand side, I need two negatives to balance. So my two negatives are electrons. And the same thing for this side, I add the electrons on the right-hand side. So two positives and two negatives gives me a neutral. OK. So atom balance and then electrons. Electrons, you can either use charge balance, which is going to be my next step. Uh, so you can combine two steps, or you can use oxidation numbers. It's always good to use both methods. Charge balance is just doing this double check. So it, I've got two positives and two negatives giving me overall zero on the left-hand side, and I've got zero on the right-hand side. Here, I've got zero on the left-hand side. And by adding the two negatives, I've got zero on the right-hand side. Are there any questions with that so far? Nope. OK. So that's the way you would look at the two half reactions. And now you've got to combine. To combine it, you've got to make sure that the number of electrons lost and gained, sorry, that's gained over here and lost over there, so the number of electrons gained and lost are the same. Are they the same in this example? Do I have the same number of electrons lost and gained? Yes, because in this case, I'm gaining two electrons. There, I'm losing 
two electrons. So you've got to make sure that we get the same amount lost and gained because we can't have electrons disappearing into thin air. We can't have them appearing out of nowhere as well. So we'll look at examples of that. And when we've got that sorted, we simply add the two half reactions together. So in this particular case, my two electrons there cancel out those two electrons and then I just add them. So 2H plus goes down, magnesium goes down, that's cancelled, my H2 goes down, my Mg2 plus goes down. So this is my full equation. So this sort of is a very simple one, but it shows you the different steps. Do the two half reactions, make sure the electrons transferred are identical, and then add them together. Your electrons should cancel because they are identical. And one should be on the left-hand side of the equation and one should be on the right-hand side of the equation. So let's do a more complicated example. So what I've just done is a check. Always do a final check because it's so easy to make a mistake. So always check. I've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one magnesium, one magnesium, two positives on this side, two positives on the right-hand side. So that should be perfectly correct now. So here's a tricky example where we have the dichromate and the SO2. We looked at this reaction um, before. So what happens when I go from a dichromate that has chromium and oxygen in it to chromium ions? Because the moment you start to balance the um, atoms, you can see I've got oxygen on the left-hand side, but no oxygen on the right-hand side. How can I add oxygen to the right-hand side? So I see Nicholas is typing by adding water. Right. You can't add oxygen as a gas in the equation because that means you have bubbled through oxygen gas, which we haven't. We've just bubbled through the SO2 gas and no oxygen. So you've got to think, what do I already have present in my reaction mixture? And what I do have present is water molecules, because remember, this is all happening in solution. So I've got water molecules. And if the reaction is acidified, I've also got H+. So if I need to add hydrogens, I'm adding it as H plus. If I need water, I add it as, sorry, if I need oxygen, I add it as water. So here what I need to do is first balance atoms, two chromiums on this side, so two chromiums on that side, I add a two. Now I need to add water. I've got seven um, oxygens, so I need to add seven water molecules. Because can you see that gives me seven oxygens? Okay. But by adding water, I've now added hydrogens. So how can I make sure I have hydrogens on the left-hand side? Remember what I said when you added, want to add oxygen, you add it as water. If you want to add hydrogen, you add it as? It's up here. We also have H plus. I think Nicholas may be typing that. So here I've got um, how many hydrogen atoms? I've got seven in front there and I've got two as a subscript. I've got 14. So I need to add 14 hydrogen ions. Okay? Because remember it's as an acid so we add it as H plus. So are all my atoms balanced? Have I got equal number of elements on both sides? Two chromiums, two chromiums. Seven oxygens, seven oxygens. Fourteen hydrogens, fourteen hydrogens. So I've balanced my atoms. Now you have to balance your electrons. Well, when I say you don't balance electrons now, such, but now you have to add in your electrons. Have electrons been lost or have they been gained? So using the oxidation number method, 
Does anybody know what the oxidation number for each chromium is in dichromate? Can you work it out using your rules? Rule number six, if you've got a polyatomic iron, it should add up, the sum of the oxidation numbers should add up to minus two. Rule number two, each oxygen in a um, uh, compound is always minus two. So if I've got seven of them, it's minus 14. So 2x minus 14 is equal to minus two. So what is x equal to? So if you think of it as 2x um, minus 14 is equal to minus two. Can you solve for x? Six, right. Oh, Nicholas, you're already there. Okay, so can you see that each one is six? Because two x is equal to 12, so x is equal to two. Here, remember rule number four, the oxidation number is the same as its charge. So each chromium ion is plus three. So I've gone from plus six to plus three. Has it gained or lost electrons? Christina's typing. It's, it's actually ga uh, gained because I'm going from plus six, which is more positive, to plus three, which is less positive. So I'm adding negatives to go from a plus six to a plus three. So if I'm gaining, it's got to appear on the left-hand side of the equation. And if each, each uh, chromium will gain three, because going from six to three is three, and I've got two chromiums, so if each one is gaining three, then two of them will be gaining six. So I can write it as plus six electrons. The other way is if you didn't want to use oxidation numbers, although that is a good one to use, is to go right. My charge on the right hand side must be equal to the charge on the left hand side. Here, seven is neutral. I mean, water is neutral. Two times plus three, so there's everything on the right hand side has a total charge of plus uh, six. Here, um, the dichromate it's minus two, and I've got. 14 positives, so everything on the left-hand side is 12 positives. So if I'm going from 12 positives to 6 positives, I need 6 negatives to make the charge the same. So can you see now if I do a charge balance, both sides are equal to plus 6. Does anybody not see that? That my total charge on my left-hand side is plus 6, and my total charge on my right-hand side is plus 6. Right, so hopefully you can all see that. <laughs> okay, so now that we've done that, we have, are happy that that equation is balanced. So now we do the other one. So what is this one? Is this the oxidation or is this the reduction? In fact, let's go back and we'll do this one because we can see where the um, electrons are. Is this the oxidation half reaction or is it the reduction half reaction? So reduction is gain of electrons, oxidation is loss of electrons. Okay, if, it's, if the electrons on the left-hand side, it's gaining the electrons. So this is actually the reduction because my electrons on the left-hand side, my dichromate has gained electrons. So dichromate is an oxidant because it oxidizes the other one and it is itself reduced. So it is in the reduction half reaction. So let's see what happens with the SO2 now. Because SO2, if I want to balance the atoms, so sulfur is 1s, 1s. Oxygen, I've got two there, I've got four there. So I'm short of oxygens on the left-hand side. How do we add oxygen when we're trying to balance the atoms. Okay, I have to add two of them, 
but in what form do I add the oxygen? Because I can't just say plus O2, because I have not bub bubbled oxygen gas through this mixture. Where can I get, what is my source of oxygen in my reaction mixture? The water. So the water is going to be my source of oxygen. Right, so we add um, water and as Christina said, we need two of them because I need two oxygens. But now that I've done that, I've added another element and I've got now hydrogen. So how can I now balance the hydrogen? If I'm adding water and I've got to balance the hydrogen, I have to also use the H+. Plus. So I now balance it by putting in the 4 H+. Plus. 4 because I've got a 2 in front there and a subscript 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so that is now my atom balance. Now I have to do my electrons and that's going to also tell me whether I'm going to, if this is my oxidation half reaction or my reduction half reaction. Yep. Using oxidation numbers, it's going from plus 4, if you work it out, for sulfur here. So um, the oxidation number of sulfur has changed from plus 4 in SO2 to plus 6 in SO42 minus. So if I'm going from plus 2 to plus so plus four, sorry, plus four to plus six, I'm going more positive. So has it lost or gained electrons, the SO2? It's, uh, it's become more positive. So it must have lost negatives. So this actually has lost uh, negatives rather than gain negatives, because if you're gaining negatives, you are going to become less positive. Does that make sense, Christina? I know this is a lot to take in, and I know if I was on a chalkboard, I would do a lot more. But So I've got my two uh, electrons here, which means I've lost it. If it's a product, it means I've given it away. If it's a reactant, it means I've taken it in. So I've lost it, I've given it away, and uh, by doing the charge balance, you can also work out that it should have been two electrons. Because this is neutral, this is neutral, so total charge here on the left-hand side is zero. And if I had two negatives and four positives, I would need to have two electrons to cancel out the two of the positives. Because I can't have zero on the left-hand side and plus two on the right-hand side. So that's another way of working out where the electrons should go. So once you've done the charge balance and everything is correct, you, then you know that equation is correct. Now if the electrons on the right hand side, is this an oxidation half reaction or is this an, a reduction half reaction? Well done. That is an oxidation, okay? Because remember, an oxidation is a loss of electrons. So the reaction is showing a loss of electrons. SO2 is, of course, the reductant because it's causing the other one, the dichromate, to gain electrons. Okay, so um, we've done the half reactions. Now remember what I said. The next step is to make sure that we get the total number of electrons gained to be equal to the total electrons lost. We can't have electrons disappearing or appearing. So here I've written them out again. Now do you notice I've got six electrons being gained, but only two electrons being lost. What can I do to turn, to make them equal? So I need to have equal number of electrons lost and gained. So Nicholas is typing there. And just for sake of time, yep, times this um, oxidation equation, the one in green, by 3. So I put a 3 in front of the SO2. 
I multiply this water by 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. I put a 3 in front of the SO4, 2 minus, because 3 times uh, 1 is 3. What number would go in front of the H plus? So if I'm multiplying this 3 by 3, 12, correct. And can you see, if I'm multiplying 3 by 3, the 2 times 3 is 6. So the 6 electrons, I'm now going to have the same amount. So just highlighting that, and there I've now done it again. So I've multiplied it all the way through. Now we have to add them up. But you've got to make sure your final equation doesn't have things on the left-hand side being repeated on the right-hand side or doubled up. You want everything to the simplest, cleanest form. So can you see we've got water on the left-hand side and we've got water on the right-hand side. We've got hydrogen ions on the right-hand side and we've got hydrogen ions on the left-hand side. So we have to cancel out as much as possible. Now the electrons cancel out. If they don't cancel out, you made a mistake. They have to cancel out. Okay. Now we look at um, the others. So if I take 12 hydrogens, all 12 hydrogens will cancel out with 12 on the left-hand side. So I'm left with how many hydrogens on the left-hand side? Because I had 14, and I'm cancelling 12 of them. So I'm left with 2. Correct. Okay, so, so I've got no hydrogens now on the right-hand side, and I've only got two on the left-hand side. And then the same thing with waters. I've got six water on the left-hand side, and I've got seven on the right-hand side. So of those seven, six get cancelled out, leaving me just with one water. And now I just add it up. So the dichromate, the hydrogen, the SO2 comes down, you know, the 3 SO2, the water's been cancelled out and the electrons have been cancelled out. Then I've got the two chromium ions, I've only got one water now, the three sulfates, and the rest has been cancelled. So that is my equation. And it's in its simplest form, I haven't doubled it up or anything like that. Okay, it's now sort of quarter two, and I think that's more or less where I was at. Uh, uh, this also as a reminder, as a final check, always check that you've got the right number of atoms, that they are equal, that you don't have electrons in the final equation, you only have electrons in half equations, and that the charge is the same. So um, in this case, it's the charge of zero for the left-hand side and a charge of zero for the right-hand side but each equation is going to be different, as long as the charge is the same on both sides. So do you think you can balance equations going through those steps? Yep. Okay. So I might do one more lesson on this, but I think a lot of people have already moved on. But it's just tying it all together, so I'll just go through perhaps next week the sort of thing you could get on the task and what you need to do to get merit and to get excellence or just to get achieved. So, um, but those are the things, you know, we've looked at the macro particle, uh, macro level, which is your observations. The important thing is tie it to the species. So say the orange dichromate becomes the green chromium ions. And as I say, you don't have to learn all these colors off by heart because you are given tables uh, in the task. You, you see them in the teacher marked assignment as well. And you talk about the colorless SO2 gas. So give the state as well. These are solutions. That's a gas. That's a colorless solution, the SO4 2 minus. Okay, any questions?